by popular request, a review and test of the USB soldering iron. You think, well, that, that's not a great idea, is it really? Especially in the show it being plugged into the side of computers. And you think, computers are only going to be 5 volts, 500 milliamps. Um, and that's like 2.5 watts. But the, these, this thing is rated, they say, 8 watts. But um, you actually get about 6 watts. Hold on, it does actually say something on the side of it. It says it rather vaguely. 5 volts, 8 watts. Okay, they're cheap, you know. In the UK, they're about £3.50 ordered from China. Uh, in America, they're about $5. And first thing I discovered about this is that the cap's on really stiff on the end of it. And I, I pulled it and it wouldn't come off. It has now. But uh, then I thought, oh, oh, it unscrews. That's, that's good. And it comes off. And I thought, that's quite nice, that. And it keeps it all aligned. And it didn't work. And it turns out that that little collet that came off in there is supposed to be on there. So you have to just use brute force and pull it off. There we go. It's got a lead with it, which um, plugs in the base. And a little metal dimple here. I say dimple, it's not a button. You can't really press it. It's a touch contact. And then you plug this into your USB power supply. Now, here's the first problem. If I plug it into my iPad power supply, because these power supplies have capacitive coupling between the mains, uh, between the mains and the output through a transformer, not not much, but still significant, and through this little capacitor here, and because the heating element here, the whole thing physically, is connected to the plus five volt rail, it means that you can actually light a neon screwdriver off this. It passes enough current at a high enough voltage to, it, it, it's about 33 microamps and you know it doesn't sound much but it's enough to make an LED glow and so if you're using it off a power supply like this there is the risk that you're going to actually damage some components so uh, that then suggests that you're better using it off a power bank and the problem there is that you're going to have to have a beefy power bank because this thing uh, requires uh, I measured the current, it was about 1.4 amps, and for reference, I measured the voltage at not at the power supply here, but actually at the tip, what was going into the heating element itself, and it measured about 4.28 volts, so you're getting about 6 watts of power. Now, there's a, another slight quirk about this, it's got a vibration sensor in it, and a touch sensor, and a timer, and it times out after a while, and if it does, then obviously a power pack like this is then going to cut out, and it's going to, you know, you're going to have to keep resetting it to wake it up again. So let's actually stick some components into a circuit board and test it, because it does melt solder. I've not actually tried soldering with it yet, though. So let's, uh, let's start with a humble resistor. That seems like a good option. So I'll plug this in. I should have left it plugged in there. I didn't think I was going to go straight to soldering quite as fast. So let's uh, activate this. I think the idea is that you're supposed to, while you're using it, you're supposed to just put your finger on that button. I'm not sure if it re-triggers. So let's uh, see how this fares with soldering. And in the, the descriptions on the internet, on the listings, they do say, you know, it's suitable for surface mount and small joints. Not really suitable for big joints. You know, that is just, that was not bad. That's surprising. That is actually quite impressive. Right, okay. Let's try an IC socket. And then we'll move on to bigger, beefier components, like, for instance, a MOSFET. So, uh, I'll just, uh... It seems to be handling the IC socket fine. Enough to burn the finger in the process. IC socket sitting down, let's give it the high-speed multiple connections type thing, see how it fares. That's actually quite impressive. This could be a useful little uh, tool for small repairs. 
It's a shame it can't be powered directly from the plug-in supplies, uh, unless you're soldering stuff that's not static sensitive. Because that little, that stray voltage, actually, you know what, let's measure the voltage on it. That, that's a really good idea, isn't it? Let's measure the voltage from this to ground. It's going to be an AC reference. Let's put this to AC volts. Put it to 200 optimistically. And I shall measure from the shell. Oh, no, of course, I'd have to plug it into the... Uh, so that's it into the Apple uh, unit now. So let's measure there. Oh, I'm getting voltage already, haven't I? Uh, to an actual ground reference, he said, trying to hold this on. Like this. What am I getting? 120 volts. Yeah, you don't really want that in your iron, do you? So that kind of... Yeah, that kind of uh, means that a beefy power bank is probably the way to go with this. But anyway, let's uh, since it's doing such a good job, and since Paris, the bank is waking up properly, let's try something beefier like a MOSFET. I wouldn't really want to solder the MOSFET, particularly soldering the gate, if this was plugged into the, the Apple power supply because the risk of uh, causing the, this high voltage damage to the gate is just there, you know, it, it poses that risk. So let's... Uh, and afterwards, of course, well, obviously I'm going to open this up and we'll take a look at the circuitry inside. Right, OK, that's uh, impressive so far. This is just... Absolutely surprising. You wouldn't think that 6 watts was going to have any significant soldering power. So this is one of the beefiest, biggest tracks here. And it seems to have done it with a plume. That's a... That's surprising. OK, right. Uh, I want to... I want to test some other stuff now. I want to get another kit down. I want to get a big terminal. What have I got here? Uh, I'll just sit this. It comes with this wee stand thing. Uh, what have I got here? I've got some beefy terminal. I, I don't think it's going to handle this. turned itself off anyway. So let's uh, get a bit of this terminal cut off. The stand is not inspiring. Let's wake this thing up. Is it going to wake up from here or am I going to have to wake it up from there? I'm going to have to wake it up from there. Righty-ho. And let's stick this big fat terminal block in here. And because it's rising clamp, I'm just going to tweak the pins up like this. I'm not holding my breath for this size of joint here. But having said that, it's surprising the other ones, so we'll see what happens. I'll let this heat up because I don't think it was running there yet. Oh, it is actually hot. My, oh my. I'm going to have to give these a good look after and see if they... But it does seem to be flowing. Oh, it's struggling in that joint. Oh, it's struggling the big one. That might, that might be a double go type joint there. Oh, but it's passable. That kind of suggests that this might be usable for audio cables for terminating the field. Not speaker cables, because they're just a complete bitch to solder. Yeah, this is uh, actually managing even these uh, bigger pads, which is really quite surprising. I wouldn't say it's 100% comfortable with those two big ones. The temptation is to reflow them with a the proper soldering iron. But it's uh, at least it's making an effort. And as long as you give it enough time to sort of rebuild its heat up, uh, it should actually have enough just to pump that, that solder into that joint. So, 
Yeah, that uh, is that's quite surprising. Right, let's unplug it and take it to bits, shall we? Because that's really what we want to do. We want to know what's inside it. So I'll stick this bit of uh, ridiculously expensive rising clamp terminal block in this bag. One of the most expensive components in that circuit board. Let's unplug the little jack connector. Uh, get a screwdriver for this and pop, pop it open. So the first thing first, is this going to be super red hot or is it cooled down enough yet? It's cooled down enough to hold, that's good. So you undo the little collet and that comes off and this just physically pulls out the end. This uh, yellow sort of cap, sort of greeny yellow cap comes off. And there are three screws holding it shut. It seems quite nicely made. I'm really surprised at its performance. That is just really surprising. It, it suddenly, it's actually viable as a little toolbox soldering iron if you've got a decent, chunky USB power supply that you normally keep on hand. Something that can comfortably supply that roughly one and a half amps uh, to this thing. Genuine surprise, by the way, I hadn't tried soldering with that and I wasn't really holding high hopes for a six volt iron. So, uh, here we go. The case comes apart and underneath the push button thing here, the sort of like the stud that you touch, is a spring leading to the ubiquitous little 8 pin chip. The good news is though, that this isn't going to be some fancy microcontroller because I've already had this open and a wee mooch inside it. That little 8 pin chip is an NE555 and it's basically uh, configured as a timer with this timing capacitor over here and it's driving, pin 3 is driving straight to this MOSFET and what I thought, I thought this was a microcontroller and that was a crystal this isn't a crystal, this is a little vibration switch with a spring inside and it's going to the same pad as the, uh, the sensor here and it's going into pin 2 on the NE555 and then there's a little diode here which looks like it's just to clip the... Uh, I, I don't know, actually, I'm wondering uh, what they're using that for. That's the plus 5 volt is going straight along there. Um, right. Is the plus 5 volt being switched by the... Don't want to bend that up too much because um, I think that's going straight. Hold on, meter. Sorry, I should have I maybe should have looked at this a wee bit more before I the last time. So the shell. I thought I was getting. I was getting continuity from the tip, that's odd. Unless it's actually the, the current, the test current was actually turning it on. Oh, that's odd. I was getting continuity from the tip through the USB connector, all the I actually plugged it into uh, this just a uh, circuit board just to actually get connection, and uh, I was getting continuity from the tip. Hold on, I'm going to do that again then. And I was getting continuity, unless it was uh, just through that the low resistance of the. Oh, I'm not getting it now. It must have been through the low resistance of the. Uh, the heating element itself that I was getting that continuity. So that would suggest that the five volts is probably. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to doodle this down. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Well, I'm actually really glad that happened because it made me reverse engineer the whole thing completely. So here we have the schematic. The uh, 5 volts comes in from the USB, I say 5 volts, it's, it's going to vary a wee bit, it's not going to be full 5 volts because of drop across the lead, particularly at 1.5 amps. 
Uh, but the rail just powers directly this 555. And initially when you power up the 555, this little uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor, uh, it's monostable configuration by the way, uh, this 100 nanofarad capacitor sort of, I believe that's what it does, it brings it into a stable state, pin 5 control, yeah, kind of, I think that uh, sets it to the, the off state initially. And when it does that, uh, pin 7 starts discharging this, it discharges this capacitor, it basically pulls it, shunts it down to uh, the negative rail and just takes any charge off it. And that's the timing capacitor. When you trigger the input to pin 2 by taking it low end, what they've done here, they've used a diode, which kind of has two functions, I suppose. It, it means that if you're touching that and there's static discharge or whatever, it can't really go above about uh, the... 5 volts because it's got that diode going towards the 5 volt rail but it also because it's a reverse bias diode it's got a very tiny leakage and that just barely holds pin to uh, this uh, near the plus 5 volt rail and and it's so light it's so sort of it's such a low current pull up that if you touch the touchpad that's uh, this little spring in this instance it's enough to actually the mains hum in your body will actually trigger that another option here is there's a vibration switch here connected to the negative rail that if you tap the soldier iron or you drop it, bump it, uh, it'll also wake it up and uh, it basically pulls that pin to, uh, two down low and that turns the output on. And at the same time that uh, basically takes the shunt off this capacitor and it starts slowly charging through this 200k resistor. When it turns on, uh, output of the pin 3 turns this MOSFET on which then uh, pulls the, the heater is connected to plus 5 volts all the time uh, and it pulls the uh, other leg of that down so it starts heating up and also there's a 3k resistor in series the LED uh, that seems quite high at 5 volts uh, but the LED still glows visibly I thought they'd have used lower of that I suppose every milliamp counts in this oh god I said milliamp now everybody will expect me to say it correctly every time I'm going to correct that to my personal milliamp. I prefer milliamp, it's the laziest, lazy way to say it. But the circuit is super simple. And as soon as that capacitor reaches the threshold detected in pin 6, yep, threshold in pin 6, then that resets the circuit. Um, I'm guessing, can, does it have to be re-triggered every time? Can it be re-triggered? I'm not really sure if it can be re-triggered. I think it would have to reset and be, you know... I don't know. If it, I suppose ultimately if you keep your finger on that button then as soon as it does cut off then because it's the touch sensor and because it's like AC signal from the, your general electrical field from your body it would just keep re-triggering it. So as long as you hold your finger on that little stud the solder iron's just going to stay active. It's a lot simpler. It's nice to see them use a standard 555. It's nice to see them use a textbook circuit and it means it's kind of like pretty serviceable and I suppose if the worst came to the worst and you get really stuck you could, if the circuitry did fail you could theoretically just bypass it completely and just jump a wire down to the bottom here and bypass that and it would just run all the time it's plugged into the USB port but um, yeah that's uh, surprising that is very surprising that little iron, I, I really didn't expect it to actually do much but it seems to have actually made a decent attempt at soldering these pads very usable that's that's surprising yeah can you tell i'm surprised i'm i'm surprised that something is so low power i guess it must just be because that low power is all concentrated at such a tiny little tip it's not trying to heat the whole body of the iron uh, it's it's surprising yeah it's uh, very very neat I, I quite like that